or you guys would remember. Remember, we talked about zeros. If one, can't, one cannot exist without the other, what was I talking about? The plus or minus. So if I have 5 minus 3i, what also has to exist? 5 plus 3i. That is hugely important when you're finding the zeros of a uh, polynomial. Because if you are given one, you know the other one has to exist. So if you guys remember, this is just like now the homework that we've been doing. You set a max equal to 0, then you write them as factors, right? We've done a couple of these. Now you set them equal to 0, so you subtract 5, add 3i. Yes? No? So therefore, I get x minus 5 plus 3i equals 0. x minus 5 minus 3i equals 0. Yes? Those are my factors set equal to 0. That's how I got the zeros. Yes? No? OK, all right. Now, the re why did we even do that? Because these are technically factors. That means factors we can multiply to give us our polynomial. So instead of doing them equal to 0, like we did when we had the 0 product property, I am going to set them equal to f of x. Because that's what we're trying to find. And then the other thing I mentioned to you guys was, remember, did it, I go over the difference? Did I do a, we didn't do, did I do, I didn't do a problem like this for you guys in the last one, did I? No. OK. So a couple things I want you guys to remember. First thing, difference of two squares. Difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. Why is the difference of two squares so important? Well, difference of two squares, the reason why it's so important is because when you have a squared term minus another squared term, you can easily factor that into a minus b times a plus b. So what I want you guys to kind of recognize here is x minus 5 is the same for both of my two factors. Would you guys agree? 3i is the same for both my factors. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. Then you have 1 plus and you have 1 minus. Right? Okay. Do you guys agree how this factored form is the same as like that factored form? Sure. Yeah. Right? So if I wanted to multiply those together, it would just become a squared minus b squared. Yes? Yeah. So rather than doing distributive property, which you could do, this makes it much easier. So therefore, I obtain x minus 5 squared minus 3i squared. Follow me? OK, the next thing I want to remind you of is multiplying. This is where everybody makes their mistake. x minus 3. x minus 3 squared is x minus 3 times x minus 3. Well, actually, you guys are talking about fives, right? Yeah. So let's do fives. This will be the last time that I'm going to multiply out binomials. First, outer, inner, last. x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. You combine your middle terms. What you get is x squared minus 10x plus 25. Then 3i times 3i is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9, times i squared. So it's really minus 9i squared. Yes? 3i times? Well, eventually, we're going to get to that. No, it's going to be minus. That's 3i squared. 3i squared, that's negative I know, I know. I'm gonna get, I haven't finished it yet, though. So what I want you guys to understand is if i equals the square root of negative 1, then i squared equals negative 1. Right? Because if you square both sides, i squared equals negative 1. So in reality, I have x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 9 times negative 1. Negative 9 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 9, plus 25 is going to be a 34. So that is your final polynomial with the two complex zeros. Did you record yeah, did you record? It's recording right now. Yes. Okay. <laughs>
online.